Have you heard about this idea called estrogen dominance? It's this idea that too much estrogen in our body will build up and then begin to cause us issues and can even lead to things like breast cancer. Hi, I'm Steve Wright, co-creator of Solving Leaky Gut, and you're about to listen in on a conversation I'm having with Harvard-trained MD, Sarah Goffrey. We're currently talking about estrogen dominance and the intersection between digestive health, leaky gut syndrome, and what happens when our hormones don't get properly excreted from our body and this sort of vicious cycle that's created. Let's listen. You know, some of the science is really well worked out, some of it less so. But, you know, one of the problems that occurs when you have this altered HPATG is that your brain just doesn't fire as well. You have poor vagal activity. And, you know, there's there's folks who are um, much smarter about this than me, but I can tell you kind of my basic understanding. The vagus is everything. Like, you want to love up your vagus. That would be, like, another major takeaway from our call today. And if your vagus is... And the vagus suffering... is, is what, Sarah? The... Yeah, so the vagus is the nerve that innervates the digestive tract. This is part of that connection between your brain, especially your brain stem, and your digestive system. So if your HPATG is off, if you've got this threat bucket that's overflowing, what tends to happen is you have poor vagal activity. You just can't fire your vagus the way that you were meant to. And the way that you see that is you have poor gallbladder function, you have poor gut uh, transit time, you know, usually that shows up as constipation, can also lead to hyperactivity of the gut and irritable or diarrhea. You also have decreased enzyme production, pancreatic enzyme production. You can also have decreased uh, stomach acid production. So there's this cascade of, of events that happens when your, your brain is sort of full of threat and your threat bucket is overflowing, your stress response system is overwhelmed, and that's the connection to the gut. And then the piece with the estrogen that I want to bring in, um, as this is happening with your HPATG being overactive, it causes uh, your immune system to not work as well, it can become suppressed, it can affect the blood flow to your gut, you get increased bad bacteria in your gut, and I sort of think about this as a frat party gone wrong. You just have too many of the wrong type of bacteria. And high cortisol also makes you crave sugar. Like it's very hard to white knuckle your way through high cortisol and not eat carbs, you know, the donut or whatever you want to. And that, you know, you, you also are not choosing to eat kale in this situation. And so you end up having a food plan that is usually low in fiber. And when you're low in fiber and you've got these bacteria in this this frat party gone wrong, that's where you start to hang on to estrogen. You know, we've got a long list here of decreased pancreatic enzyme production, poor gallbladder function, maybe constipation, you're not getting enough fiber, you're craving sugar like crazy, you're, you're getting more and more of the bad bacteria and fewer of the happy, loving bacteria. You basically have a situation where you have leaky gut and chronic low-grade inflammation. And then estrogen starts to get involved. So I already mentioned that when you have an overactive HPA, it affects your thyroid and it also affects your gonads. So what tends to happen is you start to make less thyroid hormone. And some of the symptoms of that are weight gain, feeling puffy, hair loss, fatigue, depression, about 20% of people with depression have a slow thyroid. And then with your gonads, I'll just stick with the women here for a moment. It reduces your production of progesterone and it also blocks progesterone receptors. Progesterone is like nature's Valium and that's why so many women with PMS just feel like they have so much rage and irritability. They can't soothe themselves the way that they want. There's a more complicated story there where in the brain there's some progesterone resistance. So even the progesterone you make doesn't go very far. But for our purposes, if we go back to the gut and estrogen, there's a couple of key factors here. One is when you're craving sugar and you're not getting enough fiber, and I'm talking here for women about 35 to 45 grams a day of fiber, and for men somewhere around 40 to 50 grams a day, 
you basically are going to fill up with the bad estrogens. You know, the, the idea with estrogen, if we back up for a second, is that you want to use estrogen in your body and then you want to get rid of it. And there's two different ways that you get rid of it in your liver. There's phase one, which is, you know, the, the first kind of the first half of processing estrogen is that uh, it's kind of like taking out the garbage. So taking out the garbage is the first part of getting rid of estrogen. And then the second part of getting rid of estrogen is that you have the garbage collectors kind of come by and pick up that garbage that you took to the curb. So you've got these two different parts that you want to do with estrogen. And when you're not getting enough fiber, when your liver is overloaded with xenoestrogens and endocrine disruptors, maybe alcohol, what happens is you keep taking your estrogen to the curb and it never gets picked up. It just keeps recycling in the body. And this is now linked to a worsening microbiome, worsening leaky gut, dysbiosis, and you just keep recycling this estrogen. And it can lead to things like PMS and also breast cancer. So we don't want that. We want to use estrogen, get rid of it. One of the best ways to do that is getting adequate fiber and healing your leaky gut. So I hope that makes sense in terms of the, the connection to estrogen.